Hi, I'm Melissa Stevens, and you're joining me today on Fab 15 for The Great Makeup. Let's explore how to use our old cosmetics to make art. Let's get creative. Hi, welcome back to the Fab 15. I'm Melissa Stevens. Today we are doing The Great Makeup. If you're like me, and you've decided that makeup is just too much work, or maybe you just don't like it anymore, or don't like the ingredients, whatever your reasons, I'm sure that you are like me, and you have a bunch of old makeup in a drawer, in a bag, somewhere, tucked underneath your countertop in a basket, just sitting there wasting away. So today I'm experimenting with makeup on my encaustic paintings. So I have my containers of powders and eyeshadows and blushes here and I have an array of brown eyeliner and some lip liner as well and various sized makeup brushes that I'm going to go ahead and use. I am not going to combine my encaustic tools with the makeup that I'm going to be using on the paintings. I'm only going to be using the brushes that, or the applicators that came with the makeup. I'm going to start with this kind of really pretty purple shade, and it looks like the applicator is still good. I found one applicator, and it had turned to like some sort of gummy, weird consistency. It was really gross, so I threw that one away. Well, let's go ahead and try a little bit of the eyeshadow. I'm assuming that just like eyeshadow, the tendency will be for the color to be pretty subtle. This is going to be my point. Um, but I'm assuming it will spread across the encaustic medium in a similar fashion as any of my powder pigment. So you can see this one has a really pearlescent sheen to it and it's pretty much not a color and more of just a sheen that I'm getting on the encaustic paint. I'm going to go ahead and use my finger now. I'm going to do a little bit of drawing with the lip liner. That's kind of fun. I'll be interested to see how that Fuses. Maybe I'm going to try and smear it a little bit. Spread it out. See how that works. And the eyeliner. Let's see. I'm not really clear on what my makeup is made out of. Uh, I know sometimes they'll put fish scales or crushed up bugs. I've heard all sorts of different stories. Uh, I don't know what is true and what is not. Again, like I said, we'd need to do some pretty heavy duty research to see what this stuff is made of. And the makeup that I have is pretty inexpensive. So um, it probably is not the highest quality. This is a blush and it has multiple colors in it, both the tone of your skin and that blusher color. Let's go ahead and use the big brush and see if we can get any kind of an application using that. Not really. <laughs> I'm going to use my finger. And again, I'm just getting kind of this dusty sheen on here. I also have a really old mascara. This will just kind of test it across the surface area. We might be able to get some interesting design. Who knows how it'll fuse. Here's kind of a darker, I don't know if that's like kind of a taupe color. Again, more of a sheen than anything. Could look interesting over the top of texture, maybe, or on top of accretion. I've got a series of brown colors here. 
Maybe we'll try that on some accretion. Oh, look, it's so old. The lid just broke off in my hand. Good grief. All right, so let's go ahead and try fusing this and see what we're going to get. Give it a light fuse. It's probably just going to set in, but let's check out the mascara. Oh, that's interesting. So it's starting to spread a little bit. It doesn't stink. I'm not getting any kind of a weird smell or anything like that. Ooh, look at the... Look at that. I don't know what's causing that. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's some kind of a texture occurring. You see those bubbles? That is not, that was not what the paint was doing earlier, so I'm assuming it has something to do with my old makeup. Um, but it had a really neat effect on the eyeliner there. Let's go ahead. Maybe it's the paint underneath, but I don't, I fused this right before I started streaks, uh, started taping and okay that's interesting kind of breaking up like a uh, shellac might maybe there's some shellac in my makeup yikes okay so doing some overheating here Let's see what we can get the mascara seems to want to stick together Ooh, look, look at that split wow exciting so look at that very, very interesting. I'm going to try going over this lovely stuff. Hmm. Well, okay, okay so, so I've got, got some of those bubbles underneath the mascara here as well, but it really wants to stay put. Let me blow on this really quick. It's still really, really molten. I don't know if you can see those bubbles. Lots of texture in that area. It's still kind of molten, so I don't want to mess with it. Some really interesting effects, though, with the, with the bubbles again. Okay, now it's starting to pull it out. But it looks like the mascara really wants to stay connected to itself on the surface area of the paint, but I'm really digging these cracks that are occurring on top of the encaustic paint um, where I was overheating the eyeshadow. So let's go ahead and scooch this one aside and take a look at the surface area of this one and do some of these brown tones. Um, I think that was the blush in that bottom corner that, I, that gave me that really nice crack. Oh, here's powder. This is just face powder. Let's go ahead and do, do some sections here. Here's the face powder section, which won't have any kind of shine. This is just a matte face powder. But I'm putting on a fairly good amount of it in this section. So there's the face powder. Let's go ahead and do that blush again and see if we get the same effects as we do. That's the mirror. Can't get anything with that. Okay, there we go. and rub that over the surface. It has the same effect uh, as putting on like a pearlescent oil stick or something, but again, I can't speak of the, the archival factor of makeup. I can't imagine it's great. Okay, now I've got these browns. I'm not going to use the applicator because I already bombed on that. So what we'll do is we'll use my eyeliner as kind of a divider. And we'll go ahead and... Okay, so on the brown, we're getting a little bit of the color going on if we did it on that lighter color. So this one's got enough of a... Uh, contrast going on that it is. I'm going to smear this so that it doesn't get worked up in the rest of the makeup. So there's my browns. 
and use new makeup. Maybe new makeup would have a different effect. Of course, makeup is so expensive, you probably wouldn't want to use new makeup. Here's another set of browns. This is a different brand. Let's see if that makes a difference. You can see I'm not really putting it on in any kind of an order, just kind of rubbing it across the surface. So I'm going to keep the Jane over here and the, what is this, Clinique Cowgirl over here. And then we've got L'Oreal. Let's do the purple again. And we'll just see. Ooh, look at that dark. That showed up really well in, this, in these colors. So there's the L'Oreal. I'm going to do mascara and then I'm going to do eyeliner over the top. I like the mascara. Really interesting texture. Let's do the. Ooh, okay, so I just was able to draw a line through it with the lip liner. And. I'm not going to smooth that out. I'm going to let it just be the way that it is. I suppose you could go in again with Q-tips or something like that and wipe away or um, alter the surface that you just created. I'm going to go ahead and move these extra makeup things away while I fuse. Let's see what we get. Initially, the face powder is doing nothing. I'm just fusing to set right now. A little bit of movement from the paint underneath. Okay, there's the mascara smoothing out. Let's go ahead and fuse and see if we can get some of those dramatic cracks again. Let's see about the face powder. Face powder is not doing anything. I just am seeing the paint move right now. And let's go ahead and see over here if we can get some of that. Oh, there's that cracking. Ooh, I like that. That's so fun. And the Jane, the brown. It's a little bit of cracking. It's harder to tell because the colors are too similar. And then over here we have the cover girl. Oh, did you guys see that? So cool! Look, it's, it's going and going and going. Let's see if we can encourage it to keep growing. Ooh. Fun! All right, I'm gonna have to experiment with this some more off camera. All right, here's the purple Estee Lauder. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice. There's that cracking. I'm just going to keep fusing and fusing. You can see the wax moving underneath. Makeup really is, if you think about it, makeup really is quite a shield on your face. If this is what's occurring, you've got the wax, the paint, the caustic paint is shifting underneath these coatings of the makeup, and it's only the wax. Uh, only the paint that is making it crack, it's forcing it apart. So think about that on your skin. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so let's work the mascara area again. I'm not going to... So you can see the lip liner in the eyeshadow is kind of floating away. Those areas that I carved out with the lip liner. Okay, now we're getting some cracking and overheating. I don't want to burn my paint. So that's really interesting. I uh, This is all makeup that I have left in the world. I'm not going to be rushing out to buy any more. But this was a really interesting experiment. We got to see how the makeup reacts on the surface area. <clears throat> how the encaustic paint shifts underneath and forces it apart to break. The mascara just wanted to sit still, and the longer I fused, the more I risked 
overheating my paint, so I will most likely be using a pearlescent uh, pigment rather than makeup from here on out. But this was a fun experiment. So thanks again for joining me here on the Encaustic Edge for the Fab 15. And I hope that you will come again. I hope that you will leave a comment or hit the subscribe button so that you can hear about shows that are coming up. I do the live stream on the Encaustic Edge and I do the premieres here with Fab 15. I will watch with you live and we can talk. So I look forward to that and have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.